Hello there. If you're interested in a nutrigenomics test, I'm going to explain some things about a nutrigenomics test that you might not know now. And among the things you learn, you might want to decide to get one. Because you can see down here in the corner, right below my hand, it says elevated. This means an elevated risk for rotator cuff injury. And I can't make this stuff up because growing up, I actually had rotator cuff surgery. So you can see this little scar right here on my shoulder. That's my rotator cuff surgery. Because unfortunately, as a young skinny boy, I thought I needed to get big and strong and lift a bunch of weights. So if you're ever wondering what your genes say, this will tell you. And just to give you a quick scroll of information through here, I'm going to go over a couple of these because honestly, in my genetics, they're pretty important highlights, at least for me. And if you're ever wondering why some people get in shape faster than others, there's actually genetics for that. So, you know, going to the gym and lifting, that's not designed for everybody. So with any premium test online, there should definitely be a table of contents. So inside of this nutrigenomics test, you're going to get nutritional metabolism, food intolerances and sensitivities, cardiometabolic health, weight management and body composition, eating habits, exercise physiology, fitness and injury risk, additional genetic insights for health and wellness, and hormone metabolism and methylation. So here's a little summary of results. I have an elevated need for more bioavailable sources of B12 which nutritional yeast contains B12. So I actually use brewer's yeast, and that's because I have an elevated need for B12. You might not have an elevated need for B12, and you can get B12 from normal sources of food, but I require higher bioavailability sources of B12, specifically from my genetics. I have an increased need of vitamin D daily. This is why I make it a point to get out in the sun at the highest point in the day. And I also suggest if you want to be crazy, get a vitamin D reader and find out when the best time to absorb vitamin D is where you live. Because I really don't know where you live. You're probably uh, you're just a person watching a video on the internet. I have no idea where you are. I have an increased need for calcium and then I have to watch my sodium intake. Some people can have as much salt as they want. Unfortunately, I can't. Now, I don't want to flex on anyone here, but you can see that I have uh, ultra genes for endurance, enhanced genes for power and strength, but then I have an elevated uh, muscle damage. I have an enhanced ability to experience pain. Therefore, I have uh, less pain. I, uh, I have genes that make me not feel pain as much as other people. Hashtag strength. But bone mass, that's why exercising is important. And then Achilles, a tendon injury. Yeah, I really don't want one of those. I prefer walking. So my cardiovascular exercises are definitely not running. So biking, neurogenesis, if I have an elevated risk of Achilles, a tendon injury, and I've already injured my rotator cuff based off of my genes, uh, I'm just going to try to not be unable to walk. So now energy balance, diminished. For weight loss, aim for a calorie deficit of 10 to 20% of your current ener energy, which I fast every single day. Physical activity, I have enhanced genetics. So I need at least 30 to 60 minutes of cardio activity six days a week, and then muscle strengthening activities two days a week. So my body is set up to be like a triathlete. At least that's what my genes say. And then you ever wonder why your kids might like avocados or you like avocados? There's a gene for fat taste perception. I really enjoy avocados. And then check it out. Limit the intake of saturated fats to no more than 10% of energy. There's people on the internet that tell you consume more of these. And if you have the genes for these, then you probably shouldn't be doing that because your genes don't really, they're not the same as the person that's making those recommendations for your health. So be very careful to the advice you listen to on the internet because not all of it's accurate because they have no idea what your genetics are. And wait till you see the gene variant for caffeine. Yeah, that's going to be a scary one for a lot of people. But consume at least 5% of energy from polysaturated fat. That's why avocados, great choice for me. So I hope this doesn't ruin your morning coffee, but it's best to just know. And a lot of people in our world are addicted to coffee. So I'm just going to read what this says right here, and then you can honestly make your own deduction off of this. So caffeine is the most widely consumed stimulant in the world, and coffee is, what is the most significant source of caffeine, with tea, soda, and chocolate also contributing to intakes. Which, what has more antioxidants, chocolate or blueberries? You might think it's blueberries, right? But maybe it's chocolate. I don't know. You should know the answer to that, though. Research has shown that caffeine can influence cardiovascular health. However, the reports effects of coffee on the cardiovascular system have been inconsistent and at times have appeared contradictory. 
Some studies reported a link between high coffee consumption and an elevated risk of high blood pressure and heart disease. And what's the number one leading cause of death in America? Might be heart disease. You can give it a Google. While other studies have shown no effect or even a protective effect with moderate intake. So for instance, caffeine, coffee, brain-derived neurotropic factor increases by 140%. If you don't know what BDNF is, then you should be downloading our homeostatic line PDF. But two landmark studies have now shown the effects of coffee on cardiovascular disease depends on the variant in a gene called CYP1A2. Which one do you have? Because wouldn't it be interesting waking up in the morning, fasting, and thinking you're being healthy, drinking your black coffee when you're at risk because you have a gene variant? And I think one of my favorite parts of these is just like that one more layer of validation when you're like, yeah, when you wake up in the morning and you're really sleepy and you go for your coffee, it's because caffeine is blocking an action of adenosine, which is a neuromodulator that increases drowsiness and builds up over the day as bedtime approaches. And then when you wake up in the morning, you're sleepy. And then what do people do when they're tired? They think, I need my coffee before I can function. We have literally taught ourselves in our society that, oh, I need my coffee before I can do anything. Whoa. Just because I have an elevated risk of sodium intake, I'm actually lucky here because I think ramen noodles are absolute trash. Bagel with ham is trash. Canned soup is pretty much trash. Uh, ham by itself, I, I really wouldn't eat that. Uh, tomato sauce cans, possibly, but then they add a bunch of extra salt to it. You know, cereal, bread, chips. So for instance, right here, a pickle for sodium intake. So think about exercising. You're going to sweat. You're going to lose some salt. When do you think it's the best time to consume your sodium? That's something the dietician will go over with you if you decide to get one of these nutrigenomics tests. You're not just going to get a test to look at and not be able to make sense of it. You're going to work with a gut restoration dietitian who's going to write you a diet plan, who's going to review this with you on Zoom. She's going to help you understand what all of this means because there is no possible way that you can expect a person that doesn't look at this every single day to be like, yeah, you have gene ACE and your variant is GA, which means you're at risk for higher sodium problems if you consume too much. And uh, I got that gym bro genetics right here, enhanced physical activity for weight loss. So basically, at the end of the day, Muscle, muscle conditions and exercises, strength and power and bone health, including activities of weightlifting, high intensity yoga, Pilates. Most forms of physical exercise are benefit. However, some individuals can achieve greater weight loss than others based on their genetics. So why doesn't stuff work for you? It's because we're not all the same. Just because it works for one person doesn't mean it works for another person. This would be basically like going to a group fitness class and you being six foot six and learning from someone who's five foot on different exercises and you're like, wait a second, I'm too tall for this. Wait a second, you might have different genes than someone else, which is why it actually doesn't work. And as I mentioned previously, I have the enhanced for fat taste perception. And then this is why we have a dietitian go over these because if you take cannoli oil, no. If you have soybean oil, no. If you have sunflower oil, no. Maybe flaxseed oil, Maybe some macadamia nuts, maybe some Brazil nuts, but at the end of the day, these are going to help us make the correct recommendations for you. And honestly, I don't understand why people are writing diet plans based off of the fact that someone says on the internet, yeah, avocados are good. Are they really? They may be good if you have fat taste perception genetics that make everything that is fatty taste really, really good. This is why I realized I like them. And I didn't eat them for years because I was like, ooh, green stuff. That's gross. But remember, consuming too much fat and the wrong types of fat can lead to obesity and cardiometabolic disease. We actually had a conversation with somebody today that's on keto that's been going from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor. And they're like, I'm not losing weight. Hmm. And the number one question that I get is like, what do you eat? Well, I eat once a day because... Your MC4R gene and your variant is going to tell you whether or not you should eat like all day or you should eat every once in a while. To maintain a healthy metabolism, avoid going longer than six hours without eating during the day. So technicality, I have the recommended version. 
And then it says, monitor the responses to hunger cues, which may cause a lack of energy, mood changes, stomach growling, weakness, dizziness, or having a headache. And this is where you can learn about panathetic acid. A lot of people are into fasting. So you're not going to have that lack of energy, those mood changes, the stomach growling because your gut microbiome that community is dying, the weakness because your body doesn't know how to go through intermetabolic switching, the dizziness because you might be hypoglycemic and your body hasn't learned how to operate on the ketones, or having that headache because you're good. Your gut's good. Your brain's good. And then, <clears throat> yeah, enhanced physical strength. Endurance Ultra. And then when it genuinely comes to lifting, yeah, no pain, no gain. Literally, genetics for less pain equal more gain. So now, last but not least, we're going to go into additional genetic insights for health and wellness. Now, I have an elevated need for magnesium. And you'll learn in time that the bioavailability of magnesium absorption in your mouth is quite low. So you may have heard of something called a mag bath. And that's the best way to absorb magnesium through the skin. But you can always get it through food. Just realize it's slightly lower depending on your genetics. I'm genetically predisposed to have lower levels of vitamin E. Have you ever heard of adiponectin? I don't think so. So unfortunately, my genetics say that I am likely to have diminished levels. What exactly does that mean? So if you might wonder why I fast, um, there's a gene variant right here. This is why I fast. I don't want insulin resistance. I don't want type 2 diabetes. And I don't really want to die from heart disease. Now, whenever I learned this about intraleukin-6, I was kind of fascinated because I grew up depressed. And if somebody tells you that, oh, you know, depression is a chemical imbalance. Yeah, it's definitely a chemical imbalance. But depression is also genetic. Like if depression runs in your family, there's a high likelihood that you might have gene variants that make you predisposed to being depressed. Like, could you really imagine doing the same thing as your friend, but then, but then realizing you end up getting depressed because your genes are different than your friend, even if you did the same thing as each other? And then, geez, heart disease might as well run in my family because I have an elevated risk for higher LDL cholesterol. I have an increased risk for high triglycerides. This is a main reason why I fast. I have an increased risk for high fasting glucose, which, you know, fasting glucose, about 90, it's where it's regulate. And then I have an increased risk for high insulin concentrations. So basically, with my genetics, if I wanted to be obese, it would be very simple for me to get obese, which means if I eat cake and Jimmy eats cake and Jimmy doesn't have my genes, then I'll probably get obese before Jimmy gets obese. But then I have the ultra and the enhanced versions of physical fitness. So I think with those tied into like the, the I'm going to be overweight genes, I think I'm pretty good because I make sure that I exercise at least every single day and I take like one day off, sometimes two. Not going to lie to you. Sometimes I will take two days off from the gym. But I make it a very strong point to eat healthy, and exercise as much as possible. Because not only is exercise gonna raise our brain-derived neurotropic factor levels, the links between belly fat and hippocampal volume are real. And you can look at research like the bigger the belly, the smaller the brain. Or you can download our Become Homeostatic, line, homeostatic PDF and you're gonna be able to learn all about all this stuff for free. And it will also explain the nutrigenomics test in a little bit more of a detail. So see you there. So now I'm going to leave you with this, because apparently this gene is trending around the internet. MTHFR. I have an elevated risk for higher levels. So what does that mean? So as we mentioned before, with my need for increased sources of B12, more bioavailable sources, this MTHFR gene right here would be, hmm, you might have uh, high levels and deficient in B12 and folate. So elevated risk of low levels of folate, and then I have an increased need for B12. So genetically speaking, I better be very aware that I'm getting enough B12 in a day, because if I'm not, that's bad. And here's a list of doctors over here that you can go learn about and look at the research that they have created in the world to find out whether or not you believe that this nutrigenomics test is right for you. 
This isn't some e-commerce company where you can magically arrive on our websites and magically purchase a health test. There are health professionals involved. If you get a microbiome test, it's going to be reviewed by a naturopathic doctor. You're going to meet with a gut restoration dietitian. The companies out there that sell these tests for under $400 are because you do not meet with a doctor. You do not meet with a dietitian. And some companies, I'm not going to name them, I asked a question and said, this is from the gut microbiome tests. I specifically said, hey, you have that test on file, right? And they said, yeah. And I was like, can you tell me what your keystone species are in your gut microbiome? And they said, well, well, this test doesn't have that. Their tests don't have that because they're not testing for everything. It's why there's a disclaimer on the bottom of these websites that says, do not replace for professional medical health advice. We are the professional medical health advice, and we will gladly help you with things that we know we can help you with. And we're about to be diabetes educators too. So if you got type 2 diabetes, you don't got to work with us. Just look up Dr. Jason Fung, read the book called The Obesity Code, and consider getting a nutrigenomics test if you want to know what your genes are saying. So if the pants fit, you should probably be wearing them. Sign up for a call down below. I'd love to educate you with answers to questions that you did not even know that you had to ask. Hope you have a beautiful day. Take advantage of all the free resources. See ya.